welcome back to the Staff International stage at CES 2016. Now, of course, there's a lot of interest in wearable activity trackers and monitors. Most of them tend to take the form factor of a band. Very few of them tend to take the form factor of a pair of very stylish glasses with a heads-up display. But Ernesto here has actually invented some. Ernesto from Sodos, explain what we have here. So what you have in your hand uh, right now is the implementation of a heads-up display, as you say, in a very stylish pair of uh, sunglasses, but for the dedicated cyclist. The idea being is that the cyclists nowadays are data-driven uh, training and competitive uh, sports. So Solos will allow the cyclist to have real-time data from all the sensors that are currently already in their bike or in their body presented to them in real time in a heads-up display fashion as well as acoustically through integrated speakers that we have in the system. Now it reminds me, of course, of Google Glass. Anyone here remember Google Glass? Um, did you take any inspiration from that? Is it similar kind of technology? The technology and the concept in general from a very high-level perspective is the same. A heads-up display information that gives you the data that you require on the time. However, uh, Solos by Copen in this case has a has taken a very different approach. That is a very lightweight approach. Uh, you just mentioned the uh, wristbands or the smartwatches. So think about this as a very lightweight wearable architecture that goes from the evolution of simply going from the watch to the headset, enabling the athlete to communicate with all the different sensors that are available to him through the mobile phone. Now, it's actually, if I can just describe what I'm seeing here, uh, it looks like a very bright screen that's showing me different metrics and different information. Just explain how, as I cycle through, I can change this and what kind of uh, information it's actually going to show cyclists. Okay, so uh, cyclists nowadays uh, have access to a plethora of data, power, speed, cadence, and other information that is being uh, broadcasted uh, wirelessly to either a bike computer or to their mobile phone. What you will see here is in the very unique technology that we're using, you'll see a virtual screen of about five inches at an arm's length, but floating in space. That is, without distracting you from your field of view, you'll be able to see in a very pseudo-augmented reality form fashion. Right, and you can actually move it out the way as well. Correct. Or turn uh, it off. So uh, the way that you activate that data, it can be either through touch, manually touching the, the lenses, or more importantly, you can do it hands-free, which in this case is critical. And you would do that through voice, voice activation, or through other shifters, wireless shifters that cyclists have nowadays available. To when you're going at 30 miles an hour, how easy is it for uh, a device like this to pick up somebody's voice when you've got wind hitting the microphone? That's actually one of the core technologies that we have heavily invested on and developed over the past uh, two years, three years, precisely dealing with noise in the context of, of wind and a very noisy environment, especially when you're going inside a peloton where you have 30, 40 riders all at the same time all cranking at their maximum power. Now, I said you were the inventor of these. What was your own background to invent these? So uh, I'm an MIT Media Lab uh, grad student. Or I, well, I finished there. My master's and PhD. My background was in biomechanics and bioengineering. I was developing bionic legs and exoskeletons. But uh, the philosophy taken to develop this particular set of glasses has been the same. Human-machine integration goes beyond simply slapping technology in a form factor that looks like eyewear. In this case, you want to make sure that you are very considerate of all the different nuances of having the, the, the human, in this case the athlete, in the loop of design. Um, now, obviously, it's aimed at a very specific market segment. How much are they, and are they actually available yet? Well, they're currently not available in the market yet. We plan to launch commercially within the next six months, uh, geographically in the U.S. region, uh, with a target MSRP of about $499. And where else can you see this going? Because, of course, it's aimed at cyclists today in a pair of glasses like this. Are you looking at other applications more mainstream? And if so, does the somewhat solid experience of Google Glass make you a little nervous? Uh, indeed, uh, as you said, we're focusing right now on these elite performance cyclists uh, because they're vested in, in their training. But we want to go beyond that. Data-driven sports is now a reality. The use of data analytics to provide a better training, better competitive spirit, is now present in many different sports. And cycling and running or triathlon is not the exception. 
So these uh, we're aiming to be the preferred tool for real-time delivery of critical data as they're doing their, their, their training in a real-time fashion. Good stuff, Ernesto. I wish you the best of luck. They certainly look very stylish. Plenty more from the CES 2016 convention on the Stuff TV website. Check it out. We've got all sorts of fascinating visual uh, technologies as well as plenty of other stuff as well. So uh, do uh, have a browse around. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.